Welcome back to the Neutral Zone. Today we're going to be covering the 2024 Georgia Bulldogs as we continue along with our 2024 college football preview series. As always, if you're new to the channel, please do us a favor, subscribe, hit that notification bell so you don't miss a single upload. We're going to continue doing this till the season starts, and then when the season starts, we're going to be continuing to post daily and then going live every Sunday. Um, so we look forward to talking to you, to you guys more about college football. Obviously, it's really fun. We've been growing the, the channel, our audience, uh, greatly over the last year so. Uh, come be a part of our family. Um, we'll talk college football every day. Um, but moving moving into kind of talking about Georgia, we want to talk about last year's team. Um, this is another one of the teams that we did before we kind of had a structure for our previews. Um, I said 11 and 1 or 12 and 0. You said 11 and 1. Obviously, they finished 12 and 0 um, and then lost to Georgia or lost to Alabama in the SC yeah. title game, missed out on the playoffs, then the big 60 point win against Florida State. What is your takeaway from last year's Georgia team, Doug? Yeah. I'm going to say disappointing in the fact that they didn't get the ability uh, to defend their championship in the playoffs, a one loss team. And this just goes to show that timing matters. Uh, the fact that they lost in the SEC championship, uh, really when they had looked dominant all season um, outside of a couple weeks uh, where the offense just seemed to sputter a little bit, uh, but it's just horrible timing when they lost. Uh, the fact that it was such a good and competitive playoff contention race last year, that one loss by three points uh, in the SEC championship was enough to put them out. You know, it's, 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 if you're a Georgia fan, it's kind of heartbreaking because you probably ask yourself, hey, what would have happened if, one, we beat Alabama, um, again, lost by three, uh, and, and get into the playoffs? And if we have that same path, if we play Michigan, um, in, in the first round and then, you know, Texas in the second round, or I'm sorry, Washington in the second round in the championship. Uh, are we the national champion? Are we three time national champions? Um, you know, it's, it's the question that will not be answered. Uh, well, I guess technically it was answered. They are not uh, the three time national champions, but at the end of the day, Georgia is still on a very historic run right now. What's your thoughts? Um, yeah, I think we're in the midst of a dynasty, even though they won the national championship last year. Um, I mean, I know the expectation is national championship. I mean, like some of the teams that are in the, around the country, but, you know, finishing 12 and one um, is, is not, you know, or 13 and one really is, is no, no slouch. I mean, that's your, no. in my opinion, they were the number two team um, the entire year, number three team um, behind Michigan and um, maybe a, a team like Washington or um, Alabama. But I, I still think, Throughout the entirety of the year, they showed their they were dominant. I mean, they were without Brock Bowers for a good amount of time. They were able to win the games. Carson Beck was a new quarterback. He was able to still, you know, now come into the year as a top five quarterback this year. So I think he solidified himself. So I think overall, I mean, you can't really hang your head. You're not going to win every. You're not going to win the national championship every year. And I know um, Georgia fans, Alabama fans, you know, Clemson fans, Ohio State fans. You can get to a point where you get spoiled. Um, and and you know, when you have a ten or eleven win season, it's like the end of the world. Um, so I think Georgia fans still should be pretty confident to say that they're the standard right now in college football. I think they've right, they've kind of, especially with Saban going away, they've kind of solidified themselves as, you know, the top dog. And there's not really any comparison um, as of right now. We'll see how this year shapes out. But ESPN does have them at ranked the number one um, FBI with an ESPN projected win loss of about 10 and two with about a 33% chance to win the SEC. Obviously, the SEC is loaded, so that 10-2 and two is not the same 10-2 and two as another conference, so you'll have to keep that yeah. in mind when they're projecting that. Um, and obviously, ESPN has them as the best team coming into the country this season um, or coming to the season this, this year. Um, and then, obviously, um, there's a lot of go a lot of things going on in this, in this slide. Um, Brock Bauer's gone. They lose a hell of a lot of DBs. Obviously, Lam McConkie's gone. Marvin Jones Jr. transfers out. Um, you lose a uh, uh, offensive lineman Amaris Mims. I think he got drafted in the first or second round. So yeah, he left as well. Bengals. Yeah. So a lot of losses, um, but I think returning, I mean, you, the losses that you had, I think you returned just as much good talent. I think Malachi That's Starks is one of the best safeties in college football. Carson Beck, we just talked about him. He's one of the best quarterbacks in college football. I think Rara Thomas and Dominic Levitt are going to be a, a really good duo. I think they're very slept on. Um, they didn't get as much attention last year because of Bowers and McConkey, but I think Ra Ra and Dominic are going to have really good seasons this year. I think you're going to have again one of the best front sevens in college football with Kirby Smart leading that defense, and then you bring over arguably a top three running back in college football with ETN. Um, so you bring over a few. I, 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 I don't. Oh, well, okay. Yeah. ETN, ETN. I would say there's an argument for him to be top three. I think I don't. I would say I, he's probably top five to six for me. 
But if someone told me that they think Trevor Etienne is a number three running back in college football, I wouldn't like, I, there's not to me, I can't like call him crazy for that. It's hard for me to say top three and no, not again, split carries at Florida, uh, but hasn't broke 800 yards rushing. Now, again, the talent looks like it's there. And with Georgia, uh, I suspect it's going to be different as you, and I don't think you may not have it listed, but they lost both of their top two running backs. Um, so they lost both Dijon Edwards and Kendall Milton to the end of NFL. Uh, so ETN has an opportunity to be a bell cow, be a 200 plus rush per uh, a, a guy this year. Uh, so I think he has the potential to show up, to put up the numbers. It's just hard for me to say it because we have not seen top three running back productivity, especially when you look at some of the people that are coming back. Yeah, I agree. I think the only reason why I say I think he could be a top three back is because he was on Florida. Florida has been a dumpster fire of the last couple yep. of seasons. Obviously, Anthony Richardson was their their one bright spot. Um, they had Kyle Pitts a few years back, but he's really been their entire offense. I know he split carries, but it's kind of hard when you're when you're playing on a team that doesn't have the top tier talent. Now you're going to be running behind a top five offensive line um, and a number one type team in college football. Um, Kirby Smart's going to scheme you ways to not only get the ball out of the backfield, but also get you the ball in space. And I think we're going to see his kind of impact player ability this year. Um, and I just think from the talent perspective, he's a top three to five running back. Um, but when you look at Georgia, I mean, not to put too much attention on ETM, when you look at Georgia's recruiting class as well, I mean, yeah. um, the best recruiting class this year, KJ Bolden, who flipped from Florida State to Georgia, Ellis Robinson, who's the number one corner in the draft, or not the draft, I'm sorry, um, yeah. in the in the class. Then you got a linebacker, Chris Cole, another five-star linebacker as well. Um, so I just think overall, the, what they bring back, not only returning from last year, but as well as the portal and the recruiting class, this, this is going to be a loaded team. Now, I will say... I don't know what the ceiling can be um, without a Brock Bowers. Um, and I understand people are going to say they won without him, but Brock Bowers was a, a big time safety blanket for a younger quarterback with not as much experience at the collegiate level. Now, do I think Carson Beck is a good quarterback? Yes. But at the end of the day, Brock Bowers is still arguably the best tight end we've seen in the last five to 10 years in college football. So, I mean, when you're looking at that and having that safety net and then having the offensive line you had, as well as that defense, I mean, it makes it easy on a quarterback. Now, when you're cycling in new talent, like a Benjamin Urasek from Stanford, and again, Stanford tight ends are known to be good, but when you're cycling in a new tight end to fill the shoes of a Brock Bowers, those are big shoes to fill, what can he do with this new talent around him? I don't think he's going to struggle because he has a guy, like I said, in my opinion, is top three to five running back. Ra Thomas and Dominic Lovett are going to be a good duo. Then you still bring in Kobe Young and London Humphreys. I just want to see how it looks early on. They have a few early tests in the year. Um, so we're going to find out quickly how good this team is um, and what they bring back um, in totality. Yeah, uh, Georgia, I think, has done a very good job of not having to rely on one person. So as you talk about that receiving core, uh, again, obviously Brock Bowers was the leading receiver, but you're talking about 700 yards. Lovey gave you over 600. Rara gave you over 300. Uh, they spread the ball out, again, including running backs. Didn't have a over a thousand yard rusher last year. So as I mentioned, uh, Dejon Edwards, who who left for the NFL, was at 880. Uh, Kendall Milton was at 790. They do not count on one person, and this is why. Over the years, over these past couple of years, whatever they've lost, they've been able to rebound. I think this is the year that they're really going to need to lean on Carson Beck as a quarterback, as you mentioned. Uh, because of this team, because of the the, the two-headed monster they had in the backfield, uh, Carson Beck didn't have to really put this team on his shoulders. They they The staple of a Kirby Smart team is a great defense. Uh, so they're going to play great defense. I think this is going to be a year where Carson Beck, and, and again, and I know we're going to get in the schedule here in a minute, this is probably top five hardest schedules in college football there's going to be some games where if we are talking about Carson Beck being a potential number one draft pick, we're going to need to see that talent really translate into big plays and some wins. The talents there, def that whole just about the entire offensive line came back again outside of Mims. Uh, as we mentioned, ETN, we talked about some of the receivers. Oscar Delp is coming back at tight end. Again, you talk about your set coming over for state. The talent is there. Uh, to include on the defense, but I think this this schedule is so hard 
that there's going to be a game where you need Carson Beck to show that he is number one quarterback worthy. Yeah, and I think he is. I mean, I think um him, Ewers, obviously. Um, you have you have uh um Dylan Gabriel. There's there's a yeah. lot of guys that a lot of guys are coming back this year, but I, I don't think there's that one true guy at number one. Um, right. I know last year we had Caleb, but he was really the number one guy coming into the in, into the season. I don't think this year we have that. Um, so I do think it's going to be kind of tricky to see where he lies as far as that goes. Um, I do want to move into the schedule, though. I'm going to let you go first, though. Yeah. Um, so as I mentioned, very tough schedule. You look at my floor for a Georgia team and I say seven to five. Now, do I think Georgia's going to go seven and five? No, but I think they got five games that if they lost, I wouldn't be shocked. What are the um, five? So I got the Clemson game, the Alabama game the Texas game, the Ole Miss game, and the Tennessee game are the five that if they lost, I would not be shocked. And it's tough for me to say I put their ceiling at 12-0, and 0, but it's actually tough also because I go two ways. I think they're the favorite in every game, but I think it is almost impossible. Kirby Smart would really solidify himself as the top coach in college football if he's able to navigate this schedule and end up 12 and 0 and win in the SEC, like it, this is again, you got five games. If we talk about the best teams in the SEC, well, they play, I think they're one of the only SEC teams that play three of the of the top four or five teams, plus a out of conference game against a, a Clemson team that again, regardless of what it is you believe, Clemson is a blue blood team. Um so that is that is not an easy win. This is a tough schedule to navigate. I would give all praise to Kirby Smart if he's able to navigate this and go 12 and 0. This is why I look at your 10 and 2 and I'm not mad at that. I'm not mad. I would not be shocked if they drop a game or two. I just couldn't pick a game or two where I don't think they should win. Yeah. So before I kind of get into my spiel about my 10 and two prediction, I do want to say this Georgia fans are going to be in the comment section. They're going to be going crazy. I'm letting you know now, Georgia fans look at me, anybody who says, do your research or something, I'm just not going to respond to you. So I'm just letting you know. <laughs> so you guys can comment as you want. All publicity is good publicity. So I'm gonna let that be known now. And I do want to say one other thing, looking at the schedule, of the Florida game is a neutral site game. Dad, one thing we got wrong with the Notre Dame game, three of those games that said we're home were neutral site games. And I got corrected like 10 times. So we didn't we weren't paying attention to the asterisk okay. um, on the schedule. So that was something we didn't look at. But the Florida, you, the Florida game is in Jacksonville every year. Yes. Yeah. So um, as you guys can see, I have their floor eight and four. Um, the only game I don't think that they can lose is the Tennessee game. I don't trust Nico against this Georgia defense. Um, I might think that's okay. going to be an issue. Um, but I think the Clemson game, Texas, Ole Miss, Alabama are all floor games. I think they're favorite in every one of them, just like you said. Um, yeah. But I do think that this Georgia team, again, we've done this what three years now or this will be our third year kind of talking about georgia of saying like they've lost so much they're going to be bad i'm not yeah. saying the team's going to be bad but as you alluded to the schedule is hellacious having to play all of these play all of these teams two of them being three of them being on the road i mean i i like georgia early on against alabama because i think alabama's still gonna be fighting their footing so i like them winning in brand Denny. i don't like them winning in texas and i don't like them winning in Ole miss i think Ole miss has severely slept on this year those of you guys who watched the Ole miss video i had Ole miss winning that game when you look at their schedule, though, really their toughest games are all on the road. And I mean, we can, yeah. I know the Clemson game is the technically Clemson not on the road, site, yeah. but it's a neutral site. The Florida game is a neutral site. Obviously, Alabama's on the road, Texas on the road, Ole Miss on the road. The only quote unquote hard game you have at home is Tennessee. I mean, Auburn's going to be a little bit better, but I think I favor you greatly in that. I know it's a heated rivalry matchup, but I think you guys are favored big time in that game. I just think 10 and 2, you're still going to get in the playoffs. You may even still get in the SC title game. And this is a news flash for everyone. If you guys have been watching the game so far or the preview so far, I don't have anybody in the SEC going undefeated this year. If you guys haven't noticed, I have no SEC teams going undefeated. Um, I think I have, we haven't done Texas yet. I think I had Alabama going 11 and one. And I think I had Ole Miss going 10 and two, if I'm not mistaken. Um, we haven't got to Texas yet. So obviously we'll, we'll cover them. But like I just said, I have none of them going undefeated. Um, I just think this, this conference is going to be like the PAC 12 last year. The PAC 12 was completely loaded. People were beating up on each other nonstop every other week. I um, mean, I think Georgia is going to succumb to that this year when you have to go on the road against Alabama, Texas, or Ole Miss. 
And I'm going to be honest. I wouldn't be surprised, and people can call me biased. I wouldn't be surprised if they lost week one to Clemson. I obviously have them beating us, but I wouldn't be surprised because Clemson is so slept on at this point with the whole transfer portal BS and, you know, the idea that Clemson's down. Well, when you have to play Clemson week one and you don't have a rhythm and Clemson plays just as good defense as Georgia does, this is going to come down to who makes the critical mistakes. I favor Carson Beck against Clay K. Klemnick, but at the end of the day, anything can happen. Same thing with the Alabama game. I wouldn't be surprised if Alabama won that game. They're at home. No. So I think – Two losses to me is realistic. I would be more surprised if this team went undefeated than if they went 10 and two, because I just think the schedule is crazy. Yeah. Now I still think Georgia is the favorite to win the national championship. I think if there's any team that I would say I bet on them is because Kirby smart has shown to do it the last four to five years to be very consistent in getting there over other teams. Now, do I think this is the best team top to bottom? I do not think that. I think that's Texas. I think Texas is the best team top to bottom. Now, it doesn't mean that they can't win. I just think that Texas is a better team. So I think that's going to be one of the best games this year. And I do think Georgia has a good chance to win the national championship game this year. But I just think the schedule is going to is going to really hurt them, especially when you get towards the back end, because the first six games, you have two tough games. But then the back four, really, Texas, Florida, Ole Miss, Tennessee, are there are not cakewalks. I know Florida seems to be down. Yeah, no, that's a, that's you call tough. what you want. But Florida is still a powerhouse. They could still get you at the end of the day. And, I mean, we talked about Tennessee. I don't think that Tennessee is going to beat them, but Tennessee is still a good team. So, at the end of the day, when you have four, those four games in a row, I don't know what Texas is scheduled like around that time or Florida, but when you have those four games in a row, when injuries happen, when you saw them lose a Brock Bowers last year, we saw them, you know, uh, lose uh, people on the defense. So, I think when when you're getting into having to have depth and we not, we're not knowing – who these receivers are. We don't know if a London Humphreys is going to be able to come in from Vanderbilt and produce. We don't know if a guy um, like Trevor Etienne is going to be able to mesh. I think he's going to, but at the end of the day, we're all projecting. So I really want to see where this, you know, where this team ends up. Like my dad said, if they go 12 and 0, I think at that, well, I think at this point right now, Kirby Smart's the best coach in college football. I think that's fair to say, and I'm a Dabo fan, but I think that's fair to say, but I think if he does it now, it's like, there's, there's really no argument you can make against them. No, this is salacious. But as we as we talked about Georgia continuing to lose players, I think this year out of the last three is one of the years where they bring back the most continuity. Definitely. Um, again, bringing back your starting quarterback, you've replaced two good running backs with a good running back. You bring back two of your receivers. Again, yes, you lost to Brock Bowers, but you but Oscar Delk is a very good tight end. You bring back a majority of that offensive line. You bring back a good portion of that defense. Obviously, you lost some players in the secondary, but you got a bunch of five stars in. I think out of all that, that's why I felt comfortable with the 12 and 0. And I feel like I got to defend that a little bit now, but that's why I felt comfortable with the 12 and 0 because this is the year that I believe they return a good portion of what made them good last year. Um, again, yes, I think out of all the losses, the Brock Bowers loss is, is going to be the biggest. But I think you're going to see these receivers step up. I think you're going to see Oscar Delk step up. So I think they're going to re- they're, the continuity. The only concern is Trevor e, uh, Trevor Etienne. Yeah. So again, I'm going to let you guys know, Georgia fans who come in and bash me and say I don't know what I'm talking about. Do your research. We left off this guy on the key additions. We left off this guy on the recruiting. I'm letting you know I'm not responding to any of that anymore. This is today is the video where I'm not going to respond to no more of those type of comments. I'd be in there arguing with people. Guy told me yesterday you that just um, said all no. Listen, all listen. Publicity's good guy, publicity. guy told me yesterday or two days ago. And I'm gonna leave you. I'm gonna leave you Georgia fans on this. I know it has nothing to do with you guys. Guy told me the other day that I don't know what I'm talking about and I'm ignorant because I said, again, I had Alabama beating Missouri. He told me Missouri has zero chance, Z-E-R-O, zero chance to beat Alabama. Z-E-R-O, okay. Zero chance at beating Alabama this year. That's crazy. Zero. That is crazy. He said if the game was in Mizzou, they'd have a 20% chance to beat Alabama. And to me, I was like, all right, I can't reason with somebody who's going to do that. I, I just can't reason with it. So, again, if you want to have a healthy debate and tell me where I miss, uh, then I'll do that. But if you're just in here talking nonsense, I'm not going to respond. So just save your and my time. <laughs> dislike the damn video if you want to dislike the video. Um, but, again, uh, let, let us know what you guys think of Georgia, of my 10-2 and two take, of my dad's 12-0 and take. If you haven't already, please like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell so you don't miss a second upload. We're going to be doing Louisville next. Last year I hit the nail on the head with Louisville, so I can't wait to you do did. that one. You did. Uh, we will see you guys then. Peace out, everybody. Peace.